Walking alone when the streets are empty The only thing I can see is my own silhouette I'm getting stronger Step by step The clock is ticking But there's no time for me I've been flying from town to town From London to Taiwan I've been all around the globe Trying to protect Yes, people, welcome back to Let's Talk Premier League, and we are here for the Argyle show. Liam, how are we doing? Yeah, I'm all good, mate. Decent, decent, decent. But yes, Argyle, uh, they've actually not annoyed me this week, which is uh, which is a first, actually, although it's been a pretty good season for us. I, I can't complain too much, and obviously waking up to the news that Derek Adams got sacked from, from Bradford really does show how bad Bradford are might I just say, it does show how bad that they are. If Derek Adams can't get you out of League Two, you're done. He's, mani he's managed two teams in League Two. Argyle and Morecambe got both of them promoted. If he hasn't got you up, you've you've gone wrong somewhere. His football ain't great. I'm just saying, his football is disgusting to watch. It is disgusting. Absolutely disgraceful. Horrible. But it's effective. If you have Graham Carey and Lemaires and, you know, all of that. But um, we're not here to talk about Bradford. I just thought I'd chuck that in. Um, but, yes, we are, we've are. we got a jam-packed show for you today. We're obviously going to talk about the crew result, the Shrewsbury result. We're going to be talking about Dan Scar uh, and his injury. We're going to talk about Conor Grant because I think he needs addressing this year. Uh, he's been phenomenal. Freddie Isaka, Isaka is uh, off to Wales under-17 training camp, which is amazing. Uh, Dave Galley has left Argyle for Newcastle as first-team physio. Uh, Stephen Sessignon is ready to make his debut. Schumacher and, and what he said about the Argyle atmosphere at home park. Talking about John Houghton and why I got so annoyed with him a couple of months ago uh, for this exact reason. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some an interesting stat that has come up. And then finally, to wrap it all up, we're going to talk about Argyle's away trip to Gillingham. Oh, boy. That way end is something different as well. Uh, let's just put it that way. But big up to Cop in the chat and uh, big up to Tyler who says, up the fucking Gunners. Or up by the, the way, fucking Greens, not by, Gunners. By the, and, way, it, uh, by the way, if it rains at Gillingham, um, yeah, you get soaked. Yeah. yeah. Are you shocked how much you've dropped off in the league? Well, define drop off. I mean, you know... Uh, I think uh, I, 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 I'm not actually because I think Hang when on. we, when we, we, when we played Birmingham, I think we were just around the playoffs. I think we were sixth or something. But um, no, I'm not overly surprised. The league one is very tight. League one's very tight at the top. So it's um, it's 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 something that I, I don't think is is a major problem. And look, we've got a few uh, an easy-ish sort of run in at the moment before the. The really difficult one and and with ryan low leaving it was always yeah, going to make yeah, it it was always going to yeah. make it a very difficult uh running uh nipping says hi big up but um yeah look we're, we're we're gonna we've got a lot to talk about so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dilly and dather uh dilly dather around on a lot of on a lot of the topics but let's start with crew alexandra we beat them 4-1 uh midweek last week um a very good performance a very very good performance First half was frustrating. I think you know you can you can safely say the first half was uh, the most frustrating pile of garbage I've probably seen um, mm -hmm. in quite some time. Um, obviously, we had you know plenty of chances in the first half. We had a penalty that we missed again. I'm starting to dislike penalties. Um, and and then Ennis, I think, uh, hit the crossbar, didn't he? But uh, they turned it all around in the second half uh, to, to finish the game 4-1 um, against relegation, uh, relegation 
basically favourites. I think Crew and Doncaster for me are favourites to go down pretty much straight away. I think I think it's the other two that you you sort of think about, isn't it? But um, in terms of that, Liam, what, what were your uh, what were your thoughts on the game as uh, as well as uh, evening captain Nat? Hope you are well, mate. Um, yeah, I mean. I'm glad we got the win against Crew. I mean, I think we needed it. I've, and mm. when we went 1-0 down, I was thinking, oh, God, here we go again. Mm. And, I mean, looking at the stats, um, we deserved the win. Um, very happy. And, uh, yeah, very happy with the win. I'm just going to mute myself because notifications are coming through. God's sake. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I think, you know, when 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 you go to crew we got quite a good record away to crew it's the the home record against crew that that isn't isn't the best in the world but um normally we do quite well when we're facing crew at their place um i, I remember opening day of the season i think it was league two i think it was ryan lowe's first game we uh we won three nil at their place and you know, add that to this. I think last season we drew 1-1 one, one away, but uh, last season was an anomaly. Uh, big up to uh, where Wolf as well. Hope you are. Hope you're also well. Um, but yeah, I mean, crew for me, our, our favourites go down and we made a lot of changes, you know. Um, we, we saw uh, we saw a first league start for Ryan Law uh, as well as multiple changes as as I sort of predicted. And it wasn't quite what we thought, um, what we thought we would go for uh with with the uh the, the the lineup there were a few ones after joe edwards played which sort of surprised me quite a bit because i was like crikey has he still got it in him but he, he he did have it in him but um no look when 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 you are when you're facing a crew uh it's it's important uh to to get the win you know you've got to beat teams that are in the bottom half and especially beat teams in the relegation zone because you if not, it's, it's just going to cause an almighty uh, shit, uh, shit, uh, shit storm. Um, how are you, Nal? I'm all good, thank you. I'm all good. Uh, really excited for the watch along later of PSG versus Real Madrid. Uh, I'll have the United game on in the background, but uh, I'm not really particular. I, when when you've got to when you've got a pick between PSG and yeah, yes. when mm -hmm. when you've got a pick between PSG Real Madrid or United Brighton, watching United. And, and their football or attempt to play football is very difficult to watch. So um, watching two uh, proper clubs, proper teams uh, will be quite fun. Um, as Dylan goes, our guy, oh, absolutely. But let's, let's, let's crack on and talk about Shrewsbury. Um, this one was a bit more of a, a nail biter. Um, with our goal, I don't think we'll ever question if we'll score a goal. We've only not scored in like, four games or something so i think we're always going to have that ability to uh to, to to score and to be fair i think we were i think we're quite good at keeping the back door shut when when needed uh, especially against teams like shrewsbury and, and that um but connor grant i mean boy oh boy oh boy uh, i mean I, I i i feel with connor grant he doesn't do tappings he we definitely he, he, we're calling um, connor worldies grant yeah, he, he doesn't do tappings, I'm afraid. He just does uh, just does absolute weldies. But um, uh, Wolf says, in how many hours is the stream now? Uh, three hours ish, about two hours and fifty minutes. Uh, eight p.m. kickoffs. We're live ten to eight. So yeah, around about uh, two hours and forty minutes. Um, but uh, that that goal from Conor Grant secured all three points against Shrewsbury, so six points in two games. Uh, really couldn't have asked for better reaction after a Chelsea game. And I think we said, didn't we? What sort of reaction are we going to get from from after our Chelsea performance? Are we going to get the reaction of, look, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna show what I did at Stamford Bridge in league games and try and get our goal out of League One and into a Championship, or are they going to be? you know, licking wounds and feeling sorry for themselves or thinking that job's done. I've played I've played at Stamford Bridge. Clearly, judging from what we're seeing, it's the uh, it's the first of the uh two options, which is always a positive. But Liam, what what, what were your thoughts on on the Shrewsbury game? It was a little bit wet as well. It was a bit wet. Uh, so um, yeah. just to just adds it in a little <laughs> bit. Uh yeah, I mean it was uh, dreadful. I sat in the Mayflower stand as well, which didn't help. Um, 
<laughs> never, never oh, seen. Yeah, yeah. Well, not uh, were you in lower here? Make lower, lower. Yeah, I've never seen that again. Oh, you brave, brave bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I I think I sat there. Lucky it was um lucky it was actually a uh, a um dry day, but it was very cool. Go, go on, name the game. Name it. Oh I think it was Oh it was in League Two. It was League Two. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. oh actually. Was it Newport? It might have been Newport. What was that when we battered them six one? No, yeah, no, it wasn't you put it. Mansfield, Mansfield, because um, Cockler was was in charge of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think against Shrewsbury, they, they're such a full inside Shrewsbury. Yes, they didn't, they, they haven't lost in 10 games, or the last four games they drew nil nil or, or something, or they just drew. Yeah. And they came for a point, they parked the bus, what a boring team they are, and somehow we, we got the win, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I met all the players as well after the game. Got yeah. photos with them, so uh, yeah, very happy. <laughs> you, you got a uh, got um, a team photo, basically. But no, I mean, we can hardly talk about you know shutting the shop. And well, actually, that's a lie. We sort of tried to play a little bit of football at Stamford Bridge, but um, no. But obviously, it was a wet day. Um, you know, uh, it was it was a tough game. It was a tough game. Shoes we aren't weren't like they were at the start of the season, which was basically open for business. Uh, in terms of scoring goals for us, because um, we got three of them, didn't we, uh, at their place? Um, but um, was was there any concern from your part that we wouldn't we wouldn't get the result that we wanted, and we would walk away from home park, probably feeling quite annoyed, quite down in the dumps a bit, and going, "Is playoffs really happening this year?" Or or or, or did you always think that something would happen, a moment of madness from someone? No, I thought we were going to get the win anyway. We dominated through the whole game. And I thought, like you said, I thought, I mean, I thought playoffs were, were I, in my opinion, I said before that if we didn't get six points in those two games, of that's when I thought playoffs was over. But for me, Sunderland are dropping off now. Oxford are falling off. And we got two games in London, Oxford, two games in London, Sunderland, two games in London, MK. It's, it's, it's in our hands now. Oh, I'm just watching the argument between Dylan and Wolf. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> absolutely comical. But uh, no, no, it's a, it's a good result, and and uh, Schumacher really has got this uh, this team playing well. But um, oh, by the we, way, if we, if if we beat Gingham on, Gingham on Saturday and Sunderland lose, we go by Sunderland. We've also got games in hand, so I don't really worry too much about that. Although one of them is. No, I just think it's funny. <laughs> one of them is against Pompey, and that's going to to be a two-two draw. But um, one of two of them is against Wimbledon and Cheltenham. Yeah, but one of them, no, no, our Pompey one got cancelled. So did Wimbledon. Yeah, that's the only so one. So did Cheltenham. Cheltenham didn't get cancelled. Yes, did it? it did. FA Cup. Oh, okay. oh shit! Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, one of them is against Pompey guaranteed 2-2 two, two draw but uh we need to talk about dan scar that's what we need to talk about because obviously dan scar has been uh he's been you know non-stop in the team he's every single game we've played dan scar well, of importance i don't count checker trade trophy games as a, as an important competition um but every game that we've played uh dan scar has been a part of that um dan scar's torn his hamstring he's he's torn his hamstring uh and uh schumacher has said that he's going to be out for about four to six weeks how much of a blow is this to our promotion chances he's going to miss pretty much most of well, the rest of this month and most of march which means he's only back for April, I mean, which be... is the final month of our season so he's going to miss I mean... most of our season he's not going to be match sharp when he does come back so how much of a miss is dan scar to to the argyle team Yes, he's a big miss, but the f well, to, I don't know how to put it really because he, he missed March. But looking at March's fixtures, they look winnable anyway without him. So yeah. yeah, but don't forget, it's going to take him a bit of time to get back into the yeah, sure. swing of things, match sharpness, match fitness. Yeah. it's pretty much going to be out for the rest of the season. Pretty much, he might make the last couple of weeks but... against against probably like Wickham and 
Yeah, it's going to be the hardest. It's, it's, he'll be back for the hardest run, but how how fit is he going to be for that? Yeah, exactly. I, I couldn't tell you. No, neither could I. Yeah, he's going to be a big miss. But I thought the team that we had against Shrewsbury, I thought they defended very well. So. Well, Schumacher has said this is James Bolton's chance uh, in the middle of the back three. Really how, how do you how do you think he performed against Shrewsbury? Because obviously, you know, providing no you know, actions of God or something, you'd assume James Wilson and Macaulay Gillespie will, will be right next to him. So it's, it's still somewhat the same sort of team or back line, you know, still got Coops in goal, still got Wilson yep. there, still got Macaulay Gillespie there, got Money Quit Show if he decides to want to turn up or God knows what he's doing. Um, <laughs> but uh, Bolton does look like he's going to be the one that's uh, put in, which makes sense because he's quite a similar sort of physique as Gar. And I'm not sure if he's very good at ball playing centre back, which, you know, Dan Scar's not bad at, but he's not the greatest ball playing centre back. But I don't think really that's his job. Um, yeah, acts as sort of a sweeper, doesn't he? Sort of sweeps up the yeah. back and and sends it the other way, which is always positive. It's always good. Pa- yeah. Passes it into the DM and off we go. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. actually may, it makes sense, doesn't it? Just it get does. it out into DM. They can they can start spraying balls left, right, and center, and you know, sort of sitting a little bit there to shield the back three. Which it, it does seem like a, a good formation for our girl. Especially if you want to play wing backs as well. But um Yeah. Yeah. Um Bolton, he seems to be the one that's gonna be coming in. I mean, I'm not too worried about Bolton. I just as long as we can keep like we we kept shoes be out one nil, a clean sheet. Actually yeah. saying that a clean sheet I was, we haven't got a clean sheet in ages, so I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Yeah, clean sheets do become a, a little bit of a rarity uh, for for our girl. And, and and normally it's not even Coop's fault. And I'm sure he's probably got a clean sheet bonus in his contract. To be something. honest, I so, mean, the next, the next two um, games we should be keeping clean sheets, we hope. Well, you'd hope so. We should probably kept a clean sheet against Coop as well. But, you know, um, yeah. the, the league is just uh, an odd one. Um, yeah. But... Uh, yeah, <laughs> Wolf's comment there. You just compared murder to me assuming your location. Damn, your brain is so much. Yeah. <laughs> Stupidity can sometimes be morally correct. <laughs> this argument is absolutely cracking me up. I'm loving it. It's absolutely brilliant. But we need to talk about Conor Grant because he has been exceptional this season. A six goals, four assists, ten goal contributions for a central midfielder that's made his way to left wing back. That's not a bad contribution. Um, how well has Connor done? Because not only, as I said, he's normally he's normally a central midfielder pretty much until this season and the back end of last season. You know, he was literally a central midfielder. You know, I, I hadn't seen him really in any other place. Ryan sort of shifted him out onto the left because Cooper got injured. Uh, and he didn't quite trust Ryan Law. I don't know why, but, you know, Conor Grant has really, I think he's excelled in that position, really. He's done a very good job. And and mind you, Joe Edwards is also a central midfielder playing right wing back. So maybe you don't actually need to go get wing backs. You just need to go buy a couple of central midfielders and chuck them out there. Which probably helps with ball playing, uh, with a team that wants to get out on the grass and play football. It does sort of seem to, to help having these sort of players that can do these the, the multi jobs, which I think is quite important. Yeah. Randall can play a majority and multiple roles within that central midfield role. Garrett can play right wing back, although I'm not convinced I want to see that ever again. No, um, <laughs> Ryan Broom has also played left wing back, and again, I'll reiterate, I'm not too but actually he played right wing back, didn't he? Or let he's played both, I think. And again, I'm not too keen on that idea either. Um, no. So you know it works for some, but not all. But um, how how well has Gonna Grant been this this season? Because he's been absolutely phenomenal for our girl. And um, you know we didn't we get him under Derek Adams? I think we got him under under Derek Adams, didn't we? Back in did he come through the year we got relegated? Was that the year he came in? Or the year before? One or two? No. He's been here, he's been here for a long time. You know, I think he's. I think he's approaching four or five seasons with the Green Army now. So he's he's been with us for quite some time, hasn't he? He has, yeah. Um, I, th- I think he's done brilliant this season, to be fair. Um, I think the goal against Shrewsbury was just 
Like, it was at my end as well, which was brilliant. It, it, it just went shoom, right in. I was like, yes, get in. Um, yeah. And was, he couldn't, it was he couldn't, a thunderball goal. It was absolute pelter. When I've seen Luke Chetcott's ball in, I was ball in, I was thinking, that's not going to reach anybody. And then all of a sudden, Conor Grant just goes, hello. Yeah, you, you can't hit. I, I th- He's hit the ball so sweetly that it's just an absolute rocket of a goal. He's, he's just hit it right on the sweet spot. And that's just that, no keeper in the world is, is saving that, I'm afraid. Um, for Shrewsbury, the, that is. The- I'm not too afraid for our for us, but and for, then the for, closest, when Luke Chetcott with the across the board, well, just laid it across the ground. The, the groans from home park was like, and then on the ground hit the ball. Yes. Uh. Well, uh, first question: What's what's Jeff Cott doing out on the wing? Is is, is question number one. Yeah. Um, I want that. I want that lad in the box picking up every every chance he can get a shot on goal, but um, he's, he's certainly not a winger. So that's, that's question number one. And question number two, who's leaving Conor Grant unmarked? Yeah. Clearly Shrewsbury hadn't quite worked out who's the danger point in and around the area for our goal. Um, oh, yeah. The Shrewsbury, yeah, player, uh, was, the Shrewsbury, player, was about, Shrewsbury player was about to get the ball and then he realised, like, oh, he's gone in. Well, yeah, but again, who's not who's not tracking where Conor Grant is? Uh, look, I'm not about to complain Shrewsbury's defensive duties. So I'm not about to sit here and go, well, I'm a bit annoyed about that. I frankly couldn't care. But who, in their right mind, is thinking, I know what we'll do. We'll just leave Conor Grant sort of on his own on the edge of the area. I'm sure the, I'm sure the kid can't do much damage from there. Yeah, uh, you know. It's 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 one of them. Yeah, their fans are their fans are awful. Four hundred no two hundred and eighty eight fans coming down to us. Sure, good for a team in a relegation battle. And they're taking that that allocation for Cambridge is about four hundred and seventy. <clears throat> yeah, but don't forget they're in a relegation battle. It was a shocking day in February, coming yeah, all true. the way down to the southwest. Um, I certainly wouldn't ticket if I if I was living sort of in in the middle of the country. I don't think I would be too like. You know what I really want to do. You know what I really want to do. Go down to Plymouth on a wet day in February. Uh, it's, <laughs> diehards would do it. I'll do it if if I had the money and the time off and and all of that. I assume I have the money, but I won't have the days off uh, on on a Saturday. But um, the demons, they're the worst fans coming to home part this season. I reckon the demons sing. Well. There's not much to sing about if you're a Shrewsbury fan. Um, I'm not from uh, South London. You are from there. I have decided. Wonderful. Big up, Chris. Uh, I am surprised that the protests over here in Canada isn't about Canada not broadcasting Plymouth Argyle matches. Well, uh, saying that, you... If you've got a spare forty pound a month, you can watch four Argyle games um, because they're ten pound, uh, ten pound a game, uh, and you can watch it on iPhone. So you know, you you if you if you want to, you you can watch Argyle matches. They cost you ten pounds per game. Uh, on, on it's not I follow. It's on it's Argyle me. TV. Uh, so if you go on to www.pafc.co.uk, um, get to Argyle TV. You can actually buy match passes for ten pounds. It gives you. I think we've got four camera coverage. Um, I'm I'm apparently you know advertising Argyle TV. They they don't sponsor us. If they do want to sponsor us, I'm more than happy uh, to, you know, do a do a discussion. But um, yeah, Argyle TV, ten pounds per match. You can watch that, um, watch it uh, live. Uh, you know, uh, with Argyle commentary. Uh, not sure who who Unless, Rob, yeah. Nich- Rob Nichols, I think, does the commentary. Yeah. Uh, he's normally with uh, a guy that I cannot remember, but he used to play for Argyle uh seen him heard him do it an awful lot and if 40 pounds a month doesn't really entice you uh you can buy a subscription to argyle tv for four pound 50 a month and if you wait about 12 hours the uh the format replay is put on to argyle tv for just four pound 50 per month uh so there you go argyle i've just i've just advertised argyle tv for you completely free um but you do have to pay for argyle tv uh does now do the commentary i don't i would love to i would love to but i'm not i i i'm sort of that's what i'm you that's why i do a lot of watch alongs because i would love to learn and 
get into the the idea of doing commentary. And if I could do our goal commentary, I'd be all there. I'd be all for it. I'd love it. Uh, so I, as you'll know, it's in the watch alongs. We do a lot of watch alongs. Um, if look, if if our guy wanted me to do commentary, I'd be more than up for it. So uh, yeah. But four pound fifty. Watch the full match replay after about twelve hours. Jobs are good. Um, it gets to watch it for free. Canada <laughs> is finished. Did I just watch a live uh, watch a live advertisement? You did, uh, but I haven't been paid for that advertisement. Luckily for Argyle, I love the club. So there you go. If you if you do want to watch Argyle games, you can for an easy four pound fifty per month. If you don't mind watching the game a little late, or if you want to watch it live, ten pound for a match subscription. Moving on, uh, yeah. Freddie Isaka. Um, Freddie Isaka, one from our youth academy. We've got lots of them coming along now. Uh, it's lovely. We've got conveyor belt, not of shit, like United. We have got a conveyor belt of beautiful gold, lovely gold. It's wonderful. They're coming through at a lovely, steady pace as well. It's not. We're not getting like two one season and then having to wait a few years and get another one. They're coming at a lovely, lovely speed now. Almost one a month, uh, one a year, which is beautiful. Um, you know, we've had um, we've had Mike Cooper, we've had Luke Jeffcott, we've had um, Adam Randall was our one this year after his loan from Torquay. You've got Ryan Law. You know, we've got lots of them coming through. Tom Linton's doing a great job at Truro, from what I can recall, um, scoring a few few goals down on that level as well. So it could be quite handy if, if we do near centre back next season. Potentially, Ollie Tomlinson, or maybe Ollie Tomlinson might end up at Torquay because you know it seems like you know I know they're struggling in the league this year but it does seem like a good idea of there, there were a couple of leagues below us chuck them in there see how they do did very well for uh did very well for um Adam Randall didn't it so it's, it is a positive it is absolutely a positive um uh hey Dylan oh, hey what the fuck go back yourself see you <laughs> uh I will not be watching our goal game to a finished club. Coming from a United fan, are you sure? Uh, supports Manchester United, Sylvia fans. Go watch uh, Spanish Farmer La Liga and Shush. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, also, if you want, you can donate Super Chats and Super Stickers. You are more than welcome to uh, if you want to donate on a more personal level. But Liam, Freddy Isaka, he is currently going to Wales under 17 for a training camp. Uh, and this season, he's already played for England and Wales, um, yeah. under 16s, not senior side, Jesus. But um, <laughs> he's played for both England and Wales under 16s, as you are permitted to do, because he hasn't chosen which nationality he wants to really go under. Um, and he's now going to a training uh, training camp. So, Freddie Isaka, one for the future, definitely keep your eyes out. Uh, and wait for the name because I've no doubt that he'll probably be a part. There's also another lad that I cannot remember. Is it not Freddie? Or who's that? He came on against um, Accrington. He came in against Accrington. I cannot remember uh, the name of him. Uh, but Really, really good to see our youth academy uh, fully in uh, order now and, and, and producing a lot of good talent. This is where you talk, Liam. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, hopefully he chooses England, that would be great. Um, but yeah. Well, I don't, I don't mind if he chooses England or, or Wales because... If he chooses England, he's probably in the Premier League. Um, and if he's Wales, um, he'll probably do Jeff Cotts play for the under twenty ones quite a bit for whilst whilst paying for our goal. So, you know, it's um it's 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 really good. Um so yeah, uh, Tyler says love the bots, absolutely. Uh Wolfie English. Okay. I'm going for a shower to wash my body bay. Catch you in a bit, then. Um but uh, yes, um, it's 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 one of them. Really exciting, uh, and it's it's really good for him. And again, it's showing us where the academy is at, which is wonderful to see. Love seeing the academy doing well and flourishing, and bringing through talent that we can use in the senior side, whether it be for you know getting us up the leagues or whether it be for selling on in the future. Uh, Mike Cooper, don't even think about it. Um, Dave Galley. Let's let's move on to Dave Galley. Now, Dave Galley was a part-time 
uh, park time, part time physio for Argyle. He's now moved to Newcastle United as a first team physio. Um, now I'm gonna say something, and it might sound a bit rude, so I do hope Argyle aren't actually watching this completely. Uh, with the injuries we've had, has he really been doing an awful lot? I mean, George Cooper, I, I don't even know who George Cooper is, but with the injuries we've had, um, and 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 the length as well. I know we take I know we take care of of, of the players in terms of waiting until they're fully ready, but boy, it does it does seem to take a while. But um Liam, uh, anything to say on Dave Galley or or shall we just move on? Um yeah, actually, yeah, move on. Move on we go. Uh, Tyler says, fucking hell, that's a long move from Plymouth to Newcastle. It is. Maybe he's from the north and came uh-huh. down. Uh, I know we do that a, a fair a fair bit, that we, we bring someone. He's been with us since 2019, done three years. Big up to him. Um, the only one, and, and the reason I'm not too upset about him doing it is, firstly, he's part-time. Secondly, um, he's going to a Premier League club who's just been taken over by a Saudi, so I'm sure he'll probably be having quite a nice paycheck as well. Um, the what the reason I didn't agree with the Salford one um, is because Salford are crap and in League Two. Um, but yes, uh, moving on, Stephen Sessignon. We got him on deadline day, uh, which was uh, really good. Uh, you know, we needed someone on that right wing back position to help oh. Joe Edwards. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that we drop Joe uh, Edwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. But. Stephen Sessignon got him uh, got him on deadline day. He's been out uh, with a little niggly injury uh, and 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 all of that. Um, Liam, are you excited to see Sessignon? Looks like he could be making his uh, his debut against Gillingham potentially. I know he's probably going to be in the squads for for the next couple and then hopefully on till the rest of the season. But Sessignon, uh, lots of Fulham fans talking very highly of him, saying that he could have probably still done it in the championship, maybe lower end of the championship. So we got a bit of a steal um, from, according to Fulham fans. Now, I'm not about to go all Aaron Channel on us and say we've got a generational English talent because I don't mm-hmm. think that is what Sessignon is about. But Fulham fans do talk quite highly of him, say he could have done it in the championship maybe. If that's the case, then we've got a vacant right wing back and Joe Edwards is going to have to up his game even more. I'm sure that's possible. Man has, man has scored scorpion kicks and I don't think I ever thought I'd say the word Joe Edwards scores a scorpion kick. So, you know, he's definitely got it in his locker to, to up his game. Uh, but Liam, how how good is uh, it to have it, have Sessignon back? We have sort of lacked, haven't we, on, on that right wing back um, sort of area, haven't we? Uh, a bit of depth, so... Either way, it's, it fixes a sort of problem there, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward. To, hopefully, he can start against Gillingham. That would be uh, great. And if he can keep a clean sheet, that would be uh, even better. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, Tyler says pretty much seven hours. That's how long I sleep for most nights. Uh, I'm roughly the same, seven, eight hours. Uh, I've done four once. So I was a bit of a, a, bit of a Grinch. And Dylan has been sent off, apparently. But uh, Sessignon, really, really excited to see Sessignon uh, make his debut, especially with how Fulham fans have spoken about him. But I've also heard Huddersfield and uh, Swindon fans talk quite highly of Money Critchow, and I'm not too impressed with what I've seen so far from him. Um, the fact that I'm rating Gillespie above you shows how well Gillespie's done, because at the start of the season, he was the one that petrified me. Um, but now yeah. I'm, I'm uh, Gillespie. Uh, but oh, now, yeah. nowadays, I'm I'm perfectly perfectly calm seeing Gillespie at the back, which he's done a great job. He's done a great job because I think at the start I was very nervous about watching him play football and him out uh, being in the back three. But he's he's really upped his game, and I've been really impressed with that. He's 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 looks settled now, which is really really impressive. Um, I'm really excited for for, for Gillespie, and hopefully he'll have a strong end to the season. As boy, do we need him uh, to, to have one because he's going to be a, a a more experienced player in this system with Joe uh, with uh, with um, Dan Scar out. But um, yeah, uh, six hours and five last two nights uh, working vibes. I've got I, I start next week. I think when is it a week after? I'm not sure. One of the two. One of the two. Um, yeah, Sesson Young, decent player. I don't know who he is. Um, brother of Ryan Sesson Young, who plays for Spurs, uh, but. We need to talk about what Schumacher said because uh, Stephen Schumacher has spoken about the home park atmosphere created by the Green Army. 
he's uh, he's mentioned it gives the players uh, extra energy, his players that is, um, and it intimidates uh, the opposition. Would you agree with that consensus of Schumacher that it gives the players extra energy, intimidates the opposition? It could playing at home park for the rest of the season be quite important for us and and, and trying to secure a playoff spot uh, in the end of the season? I think, for me, I think the six games that we have at home park coming up soon, Rotherham, Morecambe, uh, uh, Wimbledon, Pompey, Atkinson, Cheltenham, those six games I expect to get wins against uh, Morecambe, Wimbledon, mm-hmm. Ackerton, Cheltenham. Well, I don't really care what you expect us to get. Talk about the atmosphere. Do you agree with what okay. Schumacher said? Yeah, the atmosphere is always very good at Owen Park. I mean, I think it helps the team a lot. Um, and yeah, I think the wins, I think I think um, the six games in, that's coming up will be very crucial. I think the team and the fans can, uh, can um, get a couple of wins. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. And and look, I think it's really, um, really important for our goal, especially with the uh, boosting crowd attendances this season. Uh, you know, we, we got quite high attendances in League, uh, in League Two when when uh, when the previous manager was there. Um, not under Derek Adams. Boy, Derek Adams football was uh, that was painful to watch. I watched it, but it was painful. Um, but no, it's, it's really important with the, the, the average of around 14,000 fans. 13 12 000 fans it's not amazing but we could do better but 14 uh on a on a high we've sell, sold out our home park a few times don't forget some of the seats in in the upper grandstand is uh not able to be sold because of restricted view uh and all of that that's really there for when we finally put this sort of uh put in the um the, the corners which for our goal we've been talking about corners for years and Still not seeing them, so it'll be it'll, it'll be a little while. But I think uh, I think I think Simon Hallett said he'll put the corners in um, when it makes it financially um, profitable, which actually makes complete sense because you're not exactly wanting to do anything that ain't going to make it financially uh, compatible. Um, but obviously, he has he has the way that um, the, the the new build of the grandstand was done was enabled to put the corners in so we could just link the stadium link the grandstand with the um with the uh with the the mayflower and the the sort of the horseshoe um at home park so that was the idea as you can see they've they put the green taverners far enough away so that we can put in the corner there they've also put the the changing rooms low enough down that we can build around it or and over it and you know put the corner in that way and up that way and there just won't be a, a, a uh, an exit there won't be an exit it'll be the tunnel um it'll look quite like actually old trafford and how they do it but a smaller version uh coming out of the corner so they they've done that for a reason and and that so we can't sell out can't fully sell out at home park for every single game and every single seat because of the restrictive views. But when it's financially profitable for Argyle and, of course, Simon Hallett, he did say he would get um, a look into that. So I'm sure if we get to a championship we and sustain it there, I think he might look at uh, putting in the corners. And then finally, we've got a stands that all link together and I'm sure the people stop moaning, although they still moan about no screen. And I'm sure, I think Simon Alex said we're getting a screen. God knows what we do. do. Oh, uh, God knows where he's putting it. And I, uh, frankly, I don't, I don't pity him. Probably Me. chucks it on top of the, oh, uh, well, I'm, I'm presuming he'll probably try and either chuck it on top of the barn park end just for the Argyle fans to see, because you don't really care about what the away fans think. Um, or he'll chuck it into one of the corners, or I don't know. But I don't. We're not talking about a screen. It's the most pointless thing. I don't care. I just mentioned it. Yeah. Put what it are, you, do, what are you doing for work now? Now I'm a customer advisor for a company. Um, big up to Michael. Reckon we'll see Shuey do a Shuey like Daniel Ricardo in F1. I don't think so. I don't think Stephen Schumacher is ever going to do that. Maybe if we get promoted, he might. Maybe if he gets promoted, he might. Uh, he is my favourite. Uh, he is my lawyer, Tyler. Love it. Uh, Argyle versus Luton at Plymouth. See you both there. Absolutely. When's that happening? Um, now, 
Jordan Houghton, I got very mad very quickly. <laughs> got very pissed off with Houghton. It was after the Wickham game. Because not only did we lose 3-0 and it wasn't the greatest performance from anyone, um, he also picked up a pointless yellow card in the round about the 89th minute or something. It was just a pointless tackle. There was no need to do it. It was absolutely stupid. Picked up a yellow and I went, he's going to get a two-game ban at some point this season because he's already accumulated so many yellow cards. And he is now at risk of getting a two-game ban. I don't know how far away he is, probably one or two away from getting um, getting a two-game ban. Um, frustrating, I, I, I think with how Adam Mandel has performed, I'm less concerned about it now because, you know, you've got Adam who can sort of jump in there. But, Liam, how frustrating is it that Houghton is now risking the two-game ban because of lack of discipline on his part? I mean, some of them, yes, they're fair, but games like Wickham were just pointless and, and wasn't needed. So how frustrating is it that we're even discussing Houghton getting the two-game two ban because of uh, accumulating nearly 10 yellow cards? I mean, absolutely ludicrous. I know he's in a very physical part of the midfield, but... I mean, as I say, when I talk about the Wickham one, it just it just annoys me. What, he's on eight yellow cards now, you said, yeah? The fuck knows. Like, he, he, I know he's close. He's probably on nine, eight, seven, around there. As long as he gets... Say if he does get too much bang, hopefully it's against two awful teams. But if it's against two big clubs, we're in trouble. Well, no, because we've got Adam Mandel, who has performed yeah, very well. Adam Mandel, I think, has won Player of the Month two years, two months in a row now, or... Certainly won a lot of manner matches. You know, he's been very important for our midfield. So it's it's not a huge loss, but it's annoying. It's annoying. But um a lack of discipline, does it concern you? A lack of discipline. Um I, as I said, I know he's in a very physical part of the uh of the pitch, but um he yeah. really has got to stop picking up pointless ones. I don't mind if you know you have to do it or or, or there's a reason. But games like Wickham just frustrate me. Yeah, I don't think you need to do it against Wickham. We're just going to lose that game anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not like we're it's not like we're picking up a flaming comeback, were we? No, it's three. What was it? Three 0 down or two 0 down? Three 0 down at the time. Three 0 down. Yeah, exactly. don't be don't be generous. Don't be generous. <laughs> so it's just an it's just annoying um, when you go up. Uh, hopefully this season. But moving on, no top four tier team has scored in more league games than Argyle. 27 games this yep, season yeah. we've we've scored in. Uh, we've only missed uh, the opportunity to score in four games. One against Rotherham, one against Wickham, one against... Oh, who's the other ones? Was it Cambridge? Was Cambridge a nil-nil? No, we scored against them, uh, one each. Who's the other games you didn't score against? I've got the Argyle app on here. Hang on. Um, now I'm trying to work out who... Charlton. Fleetwood. No, Fleetwood. No, no, no. Fleetwood and Charlton. Nil-nil draw against Fleetwood and uh, two-nil loss against Charlton. Yeah, they're the ones. So four games we've uh, not scored in, but we've scored in 27. So um, that's not a bad... That's not a bad stat, is it, Liam? That, that you know, uh, if you think about it, Argyle at least going to every game thinking that we're at least going to score one goal, which means if we can try and keep a clean sheet, you, you should be going in confidently thinking we can get a result here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, against Gillingham and Cambridge, we expect to score in that game as well, to be honest with you. So that would be 29. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Rotherham after... The... You see Rotherham at home. That... I don't want to talk about Rotherham. No, don't, do. don't don't even go there. No, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, in the next two games, I see I see a score in at least. Yeah, it's it's, it's 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 just really good for it's 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 good for the confidence. I think that when they go into a game, they're thinking actually we've got a chance of scoring here, and yeah. every time they go into a game, thinking right, we're 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 at least going to score one, try and keep a clean sheet, and we can win this one nil or two nil or three nil. And then, you know, it breeds a bit of confidence. It's, it's always good for our attackers. And look, I, I think we've got four of the best strikers in the league. I, I mean, think Ryan, Ryan Hardy's very, very good. Jeff got his brilliant poacher. And Garrick and Ennis, they sort of show for themselves why they're so good. So, um, it's it's for me, it's a, a good thing. 
Yeah, hundred percent. I think twenty-seven goals this season is obviously. Yeah. We we've not scored. I mean, did you say two? Four. Oh, four. Yeah. So that's that's brilliant. I mean, I think we could get it over thirty. Um, You'd hope so. I think. I mean, Gillingham on that. Well, if, if 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 we don't, that means we haven't scored. Well, that means of our last fifteen games, we've only scored in three. Oh, right. So okay. we're definitely getting above thirty. If we get forty, that would be impressive. Yeah, well, uh, oh, uh, Doncaster got a uh, Lincoln's night. Oh, they get smashed. <laughs> Don't really care for that match. But um, uh, to wrap up, we're going to talk about Gillingham. Obviously, we mentioned that we got Gillingham at the weekend. Um, Liam, uh, how do you see this game going? Gillingham haven't been in the greatest form either. Argyle, two wins out of two, uh, you know, after our FA Cup match. Um, should we be going into this game sort of confident that we can secure a result? But it is a way to Gillingham, so um, you know it's it's not an easy place. I think last time, uh, the last the last season we played them on the last game of the season, and Keelan Watts had to be rushed to hospital after being knocked out. So um, let's hope for let's hope let's hope for not more of the same. Um, but yeah, no, I mean to be fair, we should be getting a routine routine win. Um, yeah, on Saturday, I mean, Gillingham are just that's so bad. Yeah, I mean, what's their form? I just want God to knows. Just for the um, in terms of the the team selection, though, would you would you go unchanged from a team at Gilling uh, 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 of Shrewsbury, or would you make a couple of changes? Because I noticed did did Randall play against Shrewsbury? I can't remember if he did. Um, but uh, would you would you go unchanged or would you make some changes going into this game? Got a full no. week off, so we, we, we got right. it's not exactly like they're gonna be like we've we've really got a sort of work out and work on the legs or, or something like that. And every game is a must win game from now until the end of the season. So is it sort of keep the momentum going or, or would you make changes? Or a couple no. I'm not saying make hostile hostile changes, but uh, a couple of changes maybe. No, I'd keep the same team. It's only Gillingham, and I mean, I. I'd, I'd, well, that's I'd, why. That's why I'm sort of suggesting. Yeah, true. Would you make any changes? Would you bring on maybe? Um, would you Would you give Sessignon a start? Or would you bring him off the bench? Like these are just sort of some of the questions that I've got racking in my head because every game is must win, so we can't disrespect Gillingham. Got to give them the respect that they deserve for being in our league, and um, you know, I think that's the only way to go into every game because if you. If you take your foot off the pedal, you lose. I think um, Liverpool was a prime example of that. Under when when they won the title, they went to Watford. They were unbeaten. They took the they they took the foot off the pedal and they got beat. Uh, we can't afford to get beat against teams like Gillingham or Shrewsbury or Crew or Doncaster. We've got to be getting wins, no matter if they're just one nils or two nils or three nils or three ones, two ones. It doesn't matter. If we, still can do a seven, the if we can do a seven-two like Oxford, that would be class. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. Um, but no, look, I think you know it doesn't really matter about the scoreline. Just need to keep picking up these wins because every game from now until the end of the season for me is sort of a must-win game. I think we're, we're, there's a bit of a distance between us and and the teams behind us. There's a bit of a distance, not a huge distance, um, and we're sort of in that pack of getting into the playoffs, and we've got games in hand, but. Games in hand are all great. If you don't win them, they're pointless. So, you know, I think every game coming from now until the end of the season is pretty much a must win if we want to secure playoffs. I would love to secure fourth or third. Actually, third would be better because then we're facing seventh. I mean, so, to, be, I mean to be fair, I think the third is doable because look at... Look no, at I, I agree. But what I'm saying is to achieve that, we're going to have to win most of our games from now until the end of the season. Don't forget, we're going to have Wickham, we've got Sunderland, we've got Rotherham, we've got Oxford, I think, still yet to play. I think we've still got to play Wigan as well Oxford away. Definitely. So, you know, we've got a lot of games against the top seven, pretty much. We've got a lot of games. I think, in fact, I think we've got to play everyone in the top seven. So these are all must-win games. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Um, score score well, prediction, then. What's your, what's your score prediction for Gillingham? 3 0 to us. I'm gonna go 2 0 Argyle. I think keeping our clean sheet would be uh, would be wonderful. And then we've yeah. got uh, a game on Tuesday night, haven't we? Is it um Cheltenham? Cambridge. 
Cambridge, that's one. Cambridge away, yeah, but back to back away trips now um, after our nine away games in 11 games, which is just amazing. Um, Mustafa says Maguire to Chelsea. Here we go. Paperwork will be signed until the summer of 2025. Maguire will sign for Chelsea on the 1st of June 2022. Uh, don't believe that to be true but uh i've gone for two nil uh but guys we are going to wrap it up there thank you so much for watching uh the argyle show i've thoroughly enjoyed it uh it's been a very good conversation actually it's been uh lots of lots of things to, that we we managed to cover um before you do go hit the like button hit the subscribe button as well if you are new to the channel much appreciated if you do and liam where can they find you mate um, Twitter, bleh, I can't speak. Twitter, Liam PFC Martin one. Instagram is Liam PFC Martin, and then uh, on YouTube, Liam Martin. Preview be up for Gentleman on Friday. Perfect, perfect. Uh, yeah, guys, back at seven fifty with a watch on for PSG Real Madrid. But until then, thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.